Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about positive stress for better health. I usually am talking about stress and how we need to move around it or get through it. But today I want to talk about positive stress. Like I've mentioned in other episodes, there's all kinds of stress in life. And in today's episode, I'll be talking about cold therapy as a positive stress. And, you know, adding little ways to endure challenge in our lives without triggering our fight or flight can be helpful for us to build more resilience so that we can handle the discomfort in life and give us more access to the parasympathetic side of our nervous system in times of distress. What I want you to be able to do is get stronger using some small stresses when you know you are safe, when you know that you are in control, because so much of anxiety is about not being in control, not feeling safe. So these little steps that we're going to take to get ourselves stronger, positive stresses, are done in a way that we have the stress on the body, we get the good effects from it, but it's not enough to cause us distress and trigger our fight or flight. And positive stress helps to treat mood disorders, specifically the ultra cold temperatures in whole body cryotherapy can cause psychological hormonal responses. This includes the release of adrenaline, noradrenaline, and endorphins. This can have a positive effect on those experiencing mood disorders like anxiety and depression. And that was according to Healthline. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and get into the cryotherapy world. I don't even think there's anywhere here on Maui that we could do that. But there are even less stressful ways that you can start adding this cold therapy into your life. You can get results from cold showers and cold plunges, especially if you do them regularly. Now, I actually have to say that cryotherapy would probably be <laughs> it would probably be anxiety producing for a lot of people. So I am not talking about doing that at all. That is very extreme and very few people would even have the ability to do such things. But I have to say, I have been doing cold showers for so long. I don't even know how long. I know it was when I had my stores and my kids were little and they are not little anymore. So it's been decades, let's say. So I swear by them. And now everybody in the last 10 years have really been talking a lot about them and Wim Hof, the Iceman and all of the research which is being done on cold therapy. It's awesome. But I did it then for immune boosting purposes. But I really think that now that I read all of the science on it and all of the research, it actually helped me to get stronger. I didn't even know I was doing that for that, but it did help me. So I thought, why don't you guys give it a try? So how does cold therapy work for anxiety disorders? So during your cold session, whether it be your shower or a cold plunge, and often you can find a cold plunge if you ever go to a spa or you go somewhere for a sauna, the cold plunge is quite, quite refreshing. During the cold session, your body is subjected to positive stress that activates different processes, including endorphin release. This hormone is called the happiness hormone. You know, endorphins, they actually help you to not feel pain. And there are chemicals that are produced by the body to relieve stress and pain. I'm going to say that again. The endorphins, also known as the happiness hormone, 
are chemicals produced by the body to relieve stress and pain. When we take cold plunges or cold showers, we are working with positive stress and can help our bodies bask in these happiness hormones. They can also help bring about feelings of euphoria and general well-being. You can stimulate endorphin production, of course, many other ways too. And so other positive stresses that we could talk about would be things like sports, playing sports or exercising, swimming, biking, running, brisk walking, tennis, dancing, and so forth. Tasty food can produce these endorphins. Sex, laughter, massage, and other positive stresses. This is awesome because they're available to us. It's not that we have to take it from the outside and put it in us. It is our own little pharmaceutical lab happening right inside us. We do a particular action and our body will produce these endorphins. It's awesome. And we need to pay more attention to it so that we can be the healers of our own bodies. So let's talk about some of the incredible benefits that taking cold showers can bring to you. First off, it enhances your immune system function. It does a lot of things for your immune system, and that's exactly why I started decades ago. And I lived in a cold climate, and the water was really cold. I remember when I came to Hawaii and was doing the cold shower after my hot shower, I was like, where's the cold water? Like, it really took me until my body got used to being in a warm climate all the time that now the water feels very cold to me when I put it on cold. But when I first moved here, I was like, well, where's the cold water? It does enhance your immune system function. It increases monocytes, increases lymphocytes, increases T helper cells, and increases T suppressor cells. And it also promotes noradrenaline, which, again, your body making its own chemicals for you, increases your mood, supports alertness, helps reduce the risk of depression, and it improves your focus without taking caffeine, I will add. (laughs) Next, it supports weight loss by triggering brown fat, which is a lot of research has been done on that. So it increases your metabolism, increases energy, decreases weight, and that can be helpful for a lot of people. Next, it increases insulin sensitivity. And this is super important for people who are struggling with anxiety because insulin resistance can lead to anxiety, and depression-like behaviors. So we're this complete being. We can't just say our insulin just does this. It affects everything. Everything affects everything. And so the increase in insulin sensitivity is very important. Again, that would also support people's weight challenges because the more sensitive you are, to your insulin, the less you need to be pumping out. And insulin tells the body to store fat. So remember, the insulin resistance, when your body is not sensitive to its insulin, it leads to anxiety and depression-like behaviors. The next thing that the cold stress can do for you is it reduces inflammation This is super important for those struggling with anxiety because it reduces inflammation everywhere, which includes your brain. And so we want everything to be calming down and cooling off so it can reduce inflammation. Very good for people who are struggling with pain. Again, you get your endorphins and you get reduction in inflammation. It's like a super pain reliever. It also boosts antioxidants, again, really good for our health. It has neuroprotective effects. It improves longevity and promotes autophagy or autophagy, depending on which camp you are in and how to pronounce that. I was taught autophagy a long time ago, which 
means the destruction of damaged or redundant cells. So we want to get rid of those. So anytime that we can promote autophagy, that's a good thing. So the cold does that too. We want to clean out those destructive or damaged or redundant cells. The other thing that it can do is it can lower cortisol. So when cortisol is high, we experience heightened anxiety and stress. And this is interesting because the cortisol makes us feel heightened anxiety and stress, and anxiety and stress makes us release more cortisol. It's, boy, is that not a nice cycle to be in. Again, another place where we want to be able to interrupt. So the cold therapy could be just the ticket because when the cortisol is lowered, we are in a more relaxed state. So this is super. We can interrupt so many of these cycles that we feel like I'm trapped in because of my thinking or my body chemistry or the two of them together, one influencing the other. I'm never going to get out of this. Yes, there's so many things that we are discovering that we can do. And I think the cold therapy would be a great one for you. So the cold therapy also supports fast recovery. So whatever you are dealing with, mentally or physically, it supports fast recovery. Get yourself into the habit of taking this action. If I told you that you could take it in a pill, you'd take it. Well, now you just have to take it in in the bathroom, in the shower, (laughs) or find yourself somewhere where you can get a cold plunge. When I lived in New York State, we lived on a beautiful lake, one of the Finger Lakes, and I just saw recently that the Polar Bear Club had done their dip in there, and that lake would stay cold until like August. It was freezing cold. It would freeze over many winters. It was also a very deep lake and it was spring fed. So it was just very cold lake. And, you know, little did I know that getting in that lake, I was, I was doing good stuff for myself. It didn't feel good, (laughs) but it was good for me. So let's see how we can ease you into taking cold showers because you might not live on a lake. I mean, I wouldn't have gone in the lake in the winter. I would be afraid it would be too cold and I wouldn't be able to get out or something. I'm one more control for me. I would like this under more control circumstances. So I think you might like that too. So the cold showers is the ticket. And now the research was not done just on cold plunges. They include plunges and showers. So see what you can do. I want you to try this. Give yourself the gift of adding a new routine or practice into your life. And what I love about it is it's not something you're just going to do for a week or 10 days. It's just going to do this forever. How about that? Just going to do it forever. I do it every single shower, unless I'm somewhere where that's not you know, I'm visiting or something or people, whatever, waiting for me. I got to take the extra time because I take, I, what I've done is I've shortened my hot shower down so that I can really enjoy my cold shower. Mine is three minutes. You don't start there. Believe me, you couldn't do three minutes. Probably if you could awesome, do it. But this was built up over a long, long time. So here's what you can do. You take your normal hot shower. And if you are concerned about water consumption, cut down your hot shower. You'll be saving on both the heating of the water and the water. But take your hot shower, do your regular thing, and then turn it to cold for 30 seconds. Now, I have the joy of now, just not, I haven't even had this for a whole year yet. I think I got it for Mother's Day last year. There's a little shower clock that I have that's on a suction cup in there and I can hit it. It will do one minute, hit one. I hit one three times and it'll count down the three minutes for me. So I know exactly how long I am doing my shower for. And you may need something for 30 seconds, but you can also just learn to count. I mean, for all those other years, I counted 
I was counting in the shower because I knew how long it would take me to count to three minutes, right? I don't do that anymore. I just rely on my little clock. But you figure it out with your timer on your phone how long it takes you to count to 30 seconds and give yourself a blast. And you know what? It's just like with meditation. If 30 seconds feels like that is not going to happen, because I'm telling you, after a hot shower, that cold water feels cold, and start with five seconds. I would love to see you be able to incorporate this in all these amazing health benefits by just adding it to your shower. You're in there anyway. If you can't do 30 seconds, start with five, start with 10, but do it every single time. Now, there are some schools of thought that say, then go back to a hot shower and then go back to the cold again. But I don't do that. And I know lots of people that do this and they don't do that either. So you can decide if you want to end with hot. Actually, for your skin, for your hair, ending with the cold is the best. It closes up your pores. It closes up the hair follicles. So it's much better for your body to end with cold anyway. So I would not go back to the heat unless you were doing hot, cold, hot, cold, like you were doing in a sauna or in a hot tub with cold plunge. That's different. That's when you are maybe at a spa or or somewhere fancy that you can do that. But I want you to do this as a regular practice in your life. So Again, take your normal hot shower, then turn it to all the way to cold for five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds would be your great place. And you know what? Eventually you're going to get used to the 30 seconds and then you're going to build up and eventually you will get, I am at three minutes. I probably could go longer, but I just don't want to be in the shower all day. So I'm hopefully going to be somewhere where I can jump in a cold plunge and see how long I can hang in there. But I want you to experiment. Taking cold showers, try it. Give yourself if you want to just give it a, oh, I'm going to do it for a week or two weeks and see how I feel. That would be awesome. And see if you have any changes in your mood or wellness. But what I'd really like to see you do is add this for the long haul. I think your mind and body will be grateful for it. And now for today's quote. Stress should be a powerful driving force, not an obstacle. And that's from Bill Phillips. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.